Okay. Hello there, this is Kendo Nagasaki, Peter Thornley, the man behind the mask, and I am watching Cheap Shot Entertainment this afternoon and, and this morning and tonight. Hope you all join me. Bye! Promotional consideration paid for by the following. <laughs> This is awesome! Hello and welcome wrestling fans to another retro wrestling review for Cheap Shot Entertainment. As ever, you are the Cheap Shot Nation and I am your host, Luke. And we're looking at today, we're going to give you a review and our thoughts on No Way Out 2004. It took place on February 15th at the Cow Palace in Dali City in California, and the attendance was just 11,000 for this one. It is the sixth edition of No Way Out, and is an exclusive SmackDown pay-per-view such as the times that we were living in back then with the actual brand split they had separate pay-per-views as well the theme song for this one is crossing borders and that is by ray mysterio and the arena actually appears in three different games and that is wrestlemania 21 smackdown versus raw and day of reckoning so we go into the event with a little bit of a pre-show on Sunday Night Heat. It is Tajiri, Akio and Sakoda taking on Billy Kidman, Paul London and Ultimo Dragon who had just come over from Japan. And unfortunately, on the losing end of this one, as Tajiri and his cohort go over in the first match. We move on to the pay-per-view now. We have Michael Cole and Taz on commentary. We also have a Spanish announce table, so you know that's going to go through during the course of the night. And um, we are treated to um, Playboy cover girls, Tori Wilson and Sable walking down to the ring to open the show to a little bit of fanfare but um yeah it's just kind of sign of the times really we start with the wwe tag team championship and this is a three on two handicap match the champions rikishi and scotty too hearty defending against the basham brothers doug and danny basham with St. shaniqua uh, also playing a role during this match. And that role would be to lose the match as the bonsai drop was hit on Shiniqua. The perceived weak link in this match, the team in general. Uh, and uh, obviously she ain't kicking out of that as uh, Rikishi dropped his, drops his ample behind on Shinikura's ample chest, which seemed to have ballooned over the course of the last couple of months. I think given the time that they had, I think both teams showed what they could do. Um, it's just that this one was a... How do you describe it without being horrible? This one was more of a gimmick match than it probably should have been. Um, you know, the Bashams had a decent, they've probably got a bad gimmick as far as it goes, like the, the, the torture victims for Suniqua, um, the submissive kind of thing. I don't know, I don't know how to describe it, but individually and as a tag team, the Basham brothers are actually pretty, pretty decent, and Suniqua showed what she could do later on down the line. Um, so I'm going to give this one three cheap shots out of five. Like I say, it's more the time that they had and the fact that it was a gimmick match that uh, kind of didn't 
show what either team could do. And moving on to the next match, we have yet another gimmick match here at No Way Out. It is the blindfold match between boyfriend and girlfriend, Jamie Noble and Nydia. Uh, the storyline here is that Nydia was sent blind by Tajiri and his green mist. And uh, Jamie Noble has been taking advantage of her over the last couple of weeks. Uh, which has all come to a head when Nydia revealed that she was no longer blinded by the spray but um, can now um, get in the ring and compete which you know I really liked Nydia I thought she had a great character as um, Jamie Noble's girlfriend and sort of manager valet uh, but she did win tough enough so I don't know if we ever actually got I'll probably find out in the last in the next couple of months I don't know if we ever got to actually um, experience Nydia as a professional wrestler on the uh, women's roster uh, I can't remember anything significant her most significant stuff was as Jamie Noble's uh, significant other and valet but anyway this is brought to a head by this match and uh, like I say it's a blindfold match that uh, has been ordered because of Jamie Noble's wrong doings towards his I suppose now ex-girlfriend so um, we start with a leg shot trip and a drop kick um, from Nydia because obviously Jamie Noble can't um, can't see anything and uh, Jamie Noble almost, almost gets a handful of boobs as uh, he backs Nydia into the corner, unknowingly, of course, because he's got the uh, blindfold on. And uh, Nydia manages to get out of this and pants Jamie Noble into a near fall as Jamie Noble tries to <laughs> recover his trousers. Uh, Nydia loses some hair after a, a double leg uh, takeover by... Jamie Noble and uh, Dragon Sleeper after Noble removes the hood uh, in a um, attempt to cheat and he does actually get away with everything that um, he is doing in this case um, so yeah Jamie Noble uh, does defeat Nydia via submission after removing the hood I will say this um, the match was really entertaining but it wasn't really a match I mean we're talking about a blindfolded wrestler who uh, you know is going against his, his girlfriend in gimmick I don't know what was happening otherwise but it's girlfriend in gimmick and uh, yeah it, 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 you couldn't describe this as a match but ultimately very entertaining so I'm going to give this one two cheap shots out of five and like I say I think um, in different circumstances Jamie Noble would be battling for the title the uh, um, cruiserweight championship because that is where he was made famous and where we have really enjoyed his work um, over the last couple of months. We now travel to backstage with Josh Matthews, who is giving an interview to Kurt Angle. And uh, Angle goes on to explain why he attacked John Cena and uh, why he attacked both John Cena and the Big Show but Cena comes in to break this up with a rap and uh, they has a fight um, and we move on from there the world's greatest tag team another tag team match now Charlie Haas and Shelton Benjamin uh, versus um, the APA um, so 
That is Fruk and Bradshaw, who would later in the year split and uh, Bradshaw would become JBL, uh, which would happen quite soon after this, actually, which is a damn shame because I really like the APA. Um, so Bradshaw's coming in with an injured elbow and uh, it's pretty obvious because he's got that taped up. And um, yeah, um, Farouk and Benjamin start the match. It starts with some um, wrestling holds. We get uh, some comebacks. You, Bradshaw uses um, power, or sorry, Farouk uses power to tag Bradshaw. And a double team shoulder knockdown uh, from the APA. Elbow drop near fall by Bradshaw. Charlie Haas comes in, targeting the arm of Bradshaw, and that would be the target of the world's greatest tag team for the next couple of minutes. <clears throat> Until Bradshaw manages to come back, and then it's all APA. Um, Haas is chucked out of the ring um, and charging with a uh, with his elbow into the turnbuckle Haas to target the uh, arm again with Benjamin working the arm as well and isolating Bradshaw with quick tags um, and uh, the frustration now boiling over we get a hot tag and uh, the uh, and Fruit wants to come in, um, but uh, he gets stopped by the referee, and that allows Benjamin and Haas to really do over Bradshaw. Um, Fruit is then thrown into the post on the outside as uh, misses a charge on the ropes. The clothesline from hell by Bradshaw. Um, but it's with the injured arm uh, and uh, the world, world's greatest tag team win this one due to Bradshaw delivering the finisher or his finisher with that injured arm. Um, so, yeah, I think this match it's it's decent um they do a lot with that you've got the focus on the arm world's greatest tag team former tag tag team champions of course apa former tag team champions as well and uh, you get a really good match out of both of these teams which tells a bit of a story as well which i'm always in favor of so um i'm going to give this one three cheap shots out of five again given the time they could have uh, put a lot more together, but um, it is ultimately what they were given. And it's um, it's a good match for as, for as far as that. So we'll move on to the next segment. After a blockbuster start, to this pay-per-view we now get glimpse of the man they call Goldberg who shows up wearing an awesome Santa's sleigh t-shirt at the Cow Palace after we after we see that he's been given a ticket and the commentators really bigging that up and he was given a front row ticket by Stone Cold Steve Austin we get a quick rundown of what happened at the Royal Rumble between Goldberg and Brock Lesnar with Goldberg interfering in Brock Lesnar's match. Um, uh, no, it wasn't actually. It was uh, Brock Lesnar interfering in the uh, Royal Rumble, sorry, that uh, led to Goldberg being eliminated. So um, this is where we're at now. This is the cross-promotional match that's most likely going ahead at WrestleMania. Paul Heyman comes out to confront Goldberg. He says, you're a Raw superstar. He is the general manager of SmackDown. He has no business being here. Brock Lesnar comes down the ramp. Here comes the pain. 
Goldberg crosses the line and gives a massive jackhammer to Brock Lesnar, ultimately giving him a, uh, not making him 100% for his match later on with Eddie Guerrero. Goldberg, after doing so, does get arrested and uh, gets taken to the back. Next match, Hardcore Holly versus Rhino. Notably here that Hardcore Holly makes his entrance just as Brock Lesnar is leaving uh, from what we know at the Royal Rumble. And previous months, Brock Lesnar did break Hardcore Holly's neck and he's still gunning for the champ. Um, But he comes down, running down, tries to get Brock Lesnar. Rhino makes his entrance and we get the next match. Rhino versus Hardcore Holly. Alcohol Holly attacks Rhino on the ramp. He is hot for this one. Um, and Rhino targets the arm of Holly. Holly makes a comeback here and goes up and is cut off with a superplex, an inverted DDT, and a gore sends Holly careening out of the ring. Uh, ultimately, that means that Rhino has to go out and fetch him because he cannot win by pinfall on the outside. As the referee counts Hardcore Holly, he manages to break the count on nine. Hardcore Holly gets the Alabama Slam and defeats his opponent with that move, his finishing move, which is a pretty cool move, actually. I don't think he gets enough credit that it deserves. Um, ultimately, again, a really decent match. Uh, straight down the line, two hard-hitting, uh, hardcore wrestlers, notably Rhino being in, in the original ECW, and Hardcore Holly being multiple-time hardcore champion in WWE. I'm going to give this one three cheap shots out of five, and uh, we're going to leave this match here. And make note that The Undertaker is coming. We get an Undertaker teaser trailer, a very cool teaser trailer with all the flashing images and The Undertaker and everything else. Notably, he was buried alive at the Survivor Series in 2003 by Mr. McMahon with help from Hey. Who'd have thought that would be a sentence I'd be saying in 2024? So we've got some Cruiserweight Championship action up next. Notably, its place on the card for this one, given more prominence over other titles, uh, which wouldn't be a thing that would continue, sadly, for the Cruiserweight Championship, even when they bought it back and had the big tournament to crown a new one. It is Chavo Guerrero Jr. versus Rey Mysterio who goes in as champion. Most notably here, Chavo Guerrero Sr. is with is with his son, Chavo Guerrero Jr. And um, ultimately, he would play a role in this match. Um, so. The match starts off with both guys trading moves. It eventually ends up with them circling and locking up again. Uh, the second lock up goes into headlock, whip, shoulder tackle. Uh, your basic international, as we would call it in wrestling, wrestling training. Um, remove, and, and Chavo Guerrero Jr. all the time is trying to remove Rey Mysterio's masks, which is uh, unheard of. Well, it's not unheard of, but it's unthinkable in lucha wrestling. Um, they trade more moves. The fast action here is completely different to what we've seen in previous matches. Uh, but Chavo Jr. slows everything down. Uh, but Rey Mysterio tries to quicken the pace. Uh, goes for the 619. And he does hit that. But as he goes for the West Coast pop, Chavo Sr. gets involved and yanks Mysterio off the apron. Um, and he goes... Flashing to the outside. Meanwhile, Paez, who accompanies Rey Mysterio to the ring, a, a multiple-time boxing champion, 
smacks Chavo Senior around the head and he gets sent to the back because the referee did see that. Chavo obviously concerned and takes the uh, attention away from Rey Mysterio and this leads to a springboard, a springboard, a plancher on um, Chavo Jr. Uh, and he goes for a second springboard and drop in the ring um, with the uh, springboard leg drop and that gets a near near fall. Schoolboy and another near fall. Chavo trying to break free all the time. Lifts him up into a super gut buster uh, from the second rope. Chavo now fully in control of this match. Goes for the abdominal stretch. Been working on the uh, abdomen of Rey Mysterio throughout the match. And uh, Mysterio gets the counter. Uh, Guerrero goes straight into a uh, half Boston Crab. Um, and it doesn't get all of it. Uh, Rey Mysterio manages to kick out. Um, gets a couple more near falls. DDT on the apron. Um, and uh, Mysterio is trying for a moonstalk. But Chavo gets his foot on the rope as he goes for the pin. Gory bomb. Um, cradles Rey Mysterio. Gets a two count. 6 one, nine. Uh, into a springboard as well. Single Boston Crab again. And Mysterio is very close to tapping out here. Chavo Sr. pushes Ray off the top rope as Ray Mysterio gets the upper hand and roll up a handful of tights. Chavo Guerrero Jr. is your new cruiserweight champion. I've got to say, this match was probably the... Apart from the main match, the main event the best match on the card. This one was absolutely fantastic. Um, an absolute show stealer, a sleeper hit uh, from both of these guys. But it just goes to, goes to show that if you are comfortable with the person that you're working with and know them pretty well, then you can put on a really good match. Um, and I'm going to give this four cheat shots out of five as we move to the back where Josh Matthews is interviewing Chavo Guerrero Jr., who happens to be outside the locker room of his uncle, who is about to go out for his championship match, and uh, tells how his uncle is a loser, and he won't beat Brock Lesnar, and all that rubbish, and we go to the final... Oh, no, we go to the penultimate match now, actually. Number one contenders match up next. It is a triple threat match featuring Kurt Angle, John Cena and The Big Show. Big Show is on a bit of a tear over the last month, picking up the US Championship, whereas Kurt Angle came upon the losing side of the Royal Rumble. Um, and uh, fell short there. So... <clears throat> It is um, John Cena coming down to the ring, performing his standard rap music. That their rap music that the kids listen to uh, as he insults both of, the, both of his opponents. And they go round in a round robin, beating each other up while the third person just stands there watching, which is absolutely brilliant. A uh, great way to start a uh, triple threat. Big Show absolutely dominant throughout this match with Kurt Angle dishing out uh, several belly-to-belly -belly suplexes on John Cena, obviously not really able to get Big Show up for anything like that. Uh, Cena immediately uh, is uh, going for his injured knee, which is wrapped up at this point. Uh, Big Show uh, does a massive sidewalk slam on John Cena, um, uh, on Kurt Angle rather than John Cena breaks up the pin. Um, and uh, Big Show slows down the pace, methodically destroys John Cena at this point. A couple of body slam, big leg drop, um, goes into uh, the ankle lock, 
um, on the big show uh, from Kurt Angle. John Cena works on the big show as well from the ropes. Uh, and John Cena takes out the referee as Kurt Angle gives the big show um, the... Uh, So Cena smashes, yeah, Kurt Angle gives the big show or tries to give the big show a move. John Cena smashes his face into the steps and we're on the outside now. Uh, Angle fights out. Now Angle gets uh, a near fall inside the ring. Uh, near fall on the big show. And he's still out on the floor. Angle with three German suplexes on John Cena and goes for the pin. The Big Show comes in to break it up. And we go to the finish. Uh, Cena gets the FU and hits the FU, but his knee is hurting after FUing the 500-pound Big Show. Angle sneaks in and goes for the angle slam. And... Uh, Cena manages to jump out of that and goes for the FU, hits that. Ankle lock, um, John Cena uh, away from the ropes um, after trying to crawl towards the ropes. Uh, John Cena goes for a schoolboy after breaking out of the ankle lock and um, receiving a uh, choke slam. Um, Oh, sorry, Angle receiving a choke slam from the Big Show. And uh, Angle goes up on Cena's shoulders for the FU. Big Show goes for the knee and slams his knee into the turnbuckle. <clears throat> and he goes out. Angle slam over the top rope on the Big Show. Angle takes out the knee of John Cena. Straight for the ankle lock, the leg grapevine, which is an underrated part of a any uh, submission move, which revolves a lock of any kind. Um, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, Angle goes off to WrestleMania, makes John Cena tap, and he is the winner of this match. Now, triple threat matches are sometimes hard to follow. Um, I've seen plenty of them in my time, but this one, if you're in a triple threat match and you're, you know, you're on a show, this one is definitely a good one to watch. An absolute masterclass in how to do a triple threat match and make it interesting. Absolutely fantastic. Giving it 4.5 soup shots out of five. And uh, yeah, pretty much a near perfect match on this one on to the main event of the evening and it is for the WWE Championship Brock Lesnar the champion defending against Eddie Guerrero who recently came out on top of a fatal four-way I believe um, in which uh, yeah, he got a chance to fight for the championship and he is taking every bit of this with him. Um, he's <clears throat> He uh, eliminated Kurt Angle last, so Kurt Angle didn't... Uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't the Royal Rumble they did, it was the... Uh, it, it, no, it was, a, it was a Rumble on SmackDown, sorry. Push my mouth. It was a rumble, but it was on SmackDown. Um, <clears throat> and Eddie Guerrero eliminated Angle last in that match. It really is a battle of the underdog in this one. Lesnar showing all of his power, but Eddie Guerrero has got the tenacity um, with uh, everything that he does. So Lesnar... Coming out on top, much larger, more powerful. Starts to pull more Eddie, but Eddie manages to crawl out and roll to the outside. Um, Lesnar um, tries to uh, manhandle Eddie Guerrero in this one. Um, it isn't long 
before he really gets a hold of this one. Uh, gets Eddie Guerrero in a rear naked choke, and Eddie's not had much success um, with his move set so far. Uh, he breaks out, drops to the floor in a jawbreaker, and tries to use his speed, but Brock Lesnar comes back with a huge clothesline. Lesnar remains dominant, goes back to the rear naked choke, uh, moves into the corner. Uh, uh, Lesnar charges at Eddie Guerrero with his knee first and hits the turnbuckle and flies to the outside. Eddie's focus is now on that knee, uh, gets the belly to back suplex. Eddie Guerrero gets caught with a hot shot type maneuver on the ropes and uh, Eddie picks the leg. Uh, uh, Lesnar pick, Lesnar goes for the pin, sorry, and Eddie kicks out. He then picks the leg, goes for the lasso from El Paso, but doesn't quite get it. Lesnar is way too strong. A uh, huge belly to belly from Brock Lesnar, uh, and both men down for the double count. Referee's count is broken. Vertical suplex here by Brock Lesnar. Uh, Eddie. Comes back, goes for the, uh, goes for several moves, but Brock Lesnar counters. Um, but Eddie manages to get the STF locked back in. Uh, Brock manages to break out, gets a spine buster. Uh, the champion covers twice, but Eddie kicks out. Uh, Brock Lesnar is now all Matt wrestling, rolling Eddie Guerrero round. Not letting him go. Belly to belly. Overhead suplexes. Suplexes everywhere. Suplex City before Suplex City was even a thing here. Uh, Eddie Guerrero goes up. Frog splash. But he crashes and burns. Eddie Guerrero hits. Uh, sorry. Brock Lesnar hits the F5 on Eddie Guerrero as a, as a, uh, uh, a result. And the referee gets taken out by the flailing legs of Eddie Guerrero, the resulting pin does not count because the referee cannot make the count. Uh, frustrated, goes for the championship belt, and Goldberg appears and spears Brock Lesnar to leave him out in the middle of the ring, both down as the fans uh, working into a frenzy of chance for Eddie Guerrero here. Uh, he goes for the cover and gets the kick out. Eddie grabs the title. Brock Lesnar. Slow to his feet, a title shot misses, uh, but goes for the F5 again. Eddie hits him with the title as he goes up. Frog splash, Eddie Guerrero gets the pin. And he can chalk up the assist to Goldberg here, and ultimately that would lead to the match at WrestleMania. You have a new champion in Eddie Guerrero, one of the best underdog stories in recent times that I can remember besides Daniel Bryan and Kofi Kingston except uh, this one really did resonate with people he, he really was the people's champ at this time uh, Eddie goes to celebrate with the fans as Brock Lesnar rolls out of the ring defeated and broken 4.5 cheap shots out of 5 for this one great match Two great competitors, and uh, we would see Eddie Guerrero go on a little bit of a, a run here until he was stopped a little bit later down the line in the same year, unfortunately. But great match. Um, they don't do them like this anymore. The stories, the moves that were hit, the... Um, Underdog story, uh, Lesnar being the powerful one, Eddie Guerrero being the quick one, the crafty veteran, if you will, young versus uh, the veteran. And uh, and overall, no way out with a brilliant way to get into WrestleMania. Absolutely fantastic show from start to finish. And uh, we'll be with you again for WrestleMania. 20 where it all begins again in march so we hope you can join us then if you joined us on the podcast thank you very much if you joined us on youtube thank you very much and we hope you join us again for more 
retro reviews on Cheap Shot Entertainment. You are the Cheap Shot Nation. I am your host, Luke. And I will see you next time. Goodbye.